Hey, welcome everyone to One Touch Ministry Broadcast. My name is Pastor Shannon Young, and I have with me on my arm the lovely, the beautiful Mrs. Make sure y'all got that Mrs. in there. Mrs. <laughs> Prophetess. Not the <Dietrich. laughs> Mrs. Yes. Prophetess? That's right. Young? Yes, that's right. Wow. Because they need to know that eyes are married to you. <laughs> I think the world knows already, honey. The world knows already? Yeah, praise okay, God. Okay, that's good. That's good. <laughs> hey, listen, welcome to our Love and Family uh, yes. Month right here on the broadcast on the Daily Gospel Network. Yes. And, honey, I'm so excited. Me too. I'm so excited. <laughs> wow. And this is just going to be tremendous, I'm yes. telling you. And so on today, we're actually going to be um airing together as a couple today yes. uh, we've been married now hallelujah on that faithful day june 17 2017 <laughs> is when i was able to marry my best friend and lover <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> and wow not on a great no on some serious stuff my wife is the greatest Christian woman that you'll ever know and get a chance to meet. And so you I'm telling you, <laughs> and I'm telling you, um, she really is an awesome wow. woman of God, very powerful, anointed. And I'm telling you, and I'm just really grateful to God for you. When I proposed to my wife, I honestly didn't know if she was going to say yes or not. And I'm telling you, I proposed to her on New Year's Eve. Actually, it was New Year's Day because it was 12 midnight. Yeah, the ball was dropping. Yes, yeah, so as they were saying, <laughs> 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yeah. As everybody was saying, Happy New Year. I was saying, Will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, my heart. <laughs> my heart dropped. Yes. And so I didn't know that nobody never told me that when you propose it, make sure the, the fingernails and stuff was done. Make sure that your nails is done. Yeah, so I didn't Yeah, yeah he didn't but, know. Yeah, I didn't know. But you know what? It's okay because it was it was your first. Yes, it was my first. It was your first proposal. Absolutely. Yes, it was. Um it, so you were nervous. I was very nervous. <clears throat> He didn't tell me to dress up or anything. I literally came home and put on one of my house dresses. Mm -hmm. And why did he do that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't give me a chance to get glammed up. But you know what? I Actually, now that I think about it, I do appreciate you not giving me a chance to glam up. Mm -hmm. Because you got a chance to see the real me. Yes. When the makeup is off, the nails are not done, the hair's not done. Mm -hmm. You got a chance to see who I really was. Yes. And that's what I needed. I needed that. So wow. Thank you. That's awesome. That is so awesome. So today what we're going to do is we're going to just share. I don't know what we're going to share. We're probably going to share a little bit of our testimony. Yeah. Um, we're going to share about uh, being uh, a single parent. Uh, okay. Because many don't know is that um, my wife was married before. Yes. Um, and then, uh, although I've never been married before, and I actually don't have children of my own. However, um, I was for five years, five or six years, uh, became a foster parent. Yes. And so I parented children. So not only was I a youth pastor uh, at my at my church, but then I took in kids, uh, and you know that was something that was very special and dear. Yes. And one of those kids, um, he actually asked me to adopt him. And so you know, I mean, I have an adopted son. All all of my kids, I call them all my kids. That's they right. are all special, and I love them all. Yes. And um, you know, they still call me pops. <laughs> and um, my daughter, which is my only daughter. 
Which is my baby. <laughs> yes. Oh, she's and gonna she be ninety nine years old. She's gonna be ninety nine years old. I don't care. She's still gonna be my baby. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, so why don't so let's just talk about that really quick. Okay. Um, talk about just being a single parent. You know, raising up children, being a single parent. Ooh. Um, you know, you're going into teenage years now. <laughs> and when I was a foster parent, I only took in teenage boys. And so I helped raise teenage boys from the time of 14, 15 until they all they all graduated high school. Thank Praise God. God. That is a blessing. And one of the things that um, with kids in the foster care system is because one of the things about being in the foster system is that, you know, they want to reconnect the child with the family, if it's possible. Amen. And so, um, you know, never really looked at adopting or anything like that. But um, a lot of the kids will um, show up to their visitations and their parents wouldn't show up. And so that's yeah. a whole nother level of disappointment and anger and feeling like they're... I mean, they already feel like they're abandoned because they've been ripped away from their families. Exactly. And so, you know, so I was just basically there for love and support. That's right. You know, and was able to, you know, hopefully better bring some understanding, give them some God-given wisdom and everything else. And, you know, I believe they all turned out well. I do believe so myself, you know. Um, I do believe that you experiencing that at that time mm -hmm. was really great for him. That was a time that I feel like God was allowing him to prepare for me. Mm -hmm. um, because I know what it feels like to have an infant. I know how to be an infant mother, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a toddler mother. But the teenage years... Oh my gosh, it's so difficult, you know, at mm -hmm. times because, you know, their bodies are changing. Yes. You're getting older. Yes. Your your <clears throat> tolerance level is sometimes second to none. <laughs> you yeah. know, and you know, with you, you have really helped me because I was like Arr! ready to strangle you know because hey you know she wasn't listening to me and right. I was like okay she's not gonna listen to me who's she gonna listen to you know that mm -hmm. kind of thing and you really have helped me to get through that and you yes. showed me how to communicate young people language you yes. give me that young people language mm -hmm. and you've taught me how to um manage the conversation how to listen more and talk less mm -hmm. um don't dictate um you know what I mean? Allow them to feel like it's their idea, mm -hmm. but it's really your idea. And those are some great points for <laughs> all of you who's going in between in that yes. in between stage of your child going from Woo! actually being a child to uh, a teenager. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that preteen age, yeah. uh, those are some awesome points right there. Yeah, so I had to learn that, you know. Mm -hmm. And then you know, I had to learn my daughter's language, you know, um, because I'm so used to her being such this amazing kid, yes. this jolly yes. kid. Oh, she God, is like, yes. oh, my God. You know, so I was used to that. And when she turned 10, I started seeing some different changes, but mm -hmm. she still was that jolly kid. But when she turned 13... <laughs> No, I'm so serious. It was like the day she turned 13, 12 o'clock midnight, she turned into this whole different person. Wow. And I was just like, okay, Sierra, I don't like this side of you. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have to fix this before mommy has to hurt you. You know? <laughs> but I really believe that most parents don't know communication. And mm -hmm. let your kids talk. Yes. You know, um, let them... Let them express themselves. Mm -hmm. My daughter expresses herself through clothes. Yes. yes. But where we 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 both express ourselves through clothes. Yes. Yes. You okay. Because mm -hmm. I love fashion. That's my niche. Hair, mm -hmm. makeup, fashion, singing, writing. That's my thing. My mm -hmm. daughter is the same way, but she does hers a little bit differently. Yes. So when my daughter finds something that she's interested in, she'll knock on my door, Mom, 
let me tell you, let me tell you what I learned today. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes. Tell mommy what you learned. And I do that because the, if she's coming to me to talk to me, mm-hmm. that's like a winner. Mm-hmm. Chicken dinner. Yes. You know what I mean? So that that's why I am so grateful for you learning how to speak the youthful language. Mm-hmm. So we both have different things to bring to the table, yes. which makes our table so full. Yes. You know absolutely. what I mean? I didn't cook everything. You didn't cook everything. But we mm-hmm. did share in cooking, yes. which makes it feel like, hey, we can take the plate. Everybody pass the plate around. Mm-hmm. Get a little bit of everything here, you know, mm-hmm. from this table. So that's what I love. That you were a, a wonderful, I, you were a spiritual father. Mm, yes, My husband yes. literally was a spiritual father to these young men. Mm-hmm. I won't say boys because they're no longer boys, they're no, young they're men. Not. Yes. And they're strong true. young men. They're learning themselves. They're coming into their 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 fatherhood. Some of them are mm-hmm. fathers, mm-hmm. so they're coming into the fatherhood and they're enjoying fatherhood. Yes. And I do believe you showed them family. You yes. showed them how to want a family. Yes. And mm-hmm. you showed them if my family not doing me right, how do I fix it? Because mm-hmm. you know you said you were have you would have I think it was Wednesday nights. Yes. Y'all yes. would go out to eat. Yep. Yes, that absolutely. was fellowship time. That, yep, that was that that was family night. So what we would do is that uh, we will go to church. We'll go to Bible study, mm-hmm. and for some who don't know, you cannot make the children yeah, I believe in too. what you believe in. <laughs> <laughs> And so, you know, and, and thank God that, you know, that they were receptive, the, the kids were receptive to be able to do that. So they went, we went to Bible study mm-hmm. and then after Bible study was family night. So we went to Applebee's and we would sit around the table and we would talk and we would laugh and just, and Amen. just hang out just as a family Amen. because a lot of them didn't get a chance to experience you no know, family life on that. They level. didn't even know what a dinner table was. They yes. didn't know what it was to sit yes. down yes. at the dinner table. Yes, we have a dinner table, mm-hmm. but we spend a lot of time in the living room and in front of the TV and stuff like that. But was it what day was that? Was it Christmas? Something, Christmas or Thanksgiving? Some, some, no, you had made like spaghetti that night. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. New Year's. It was New Year's. Yes, it was New Year's, and. I'm thinking that we're going to come downstairs. We're going to be in front of the TV. <laughs> My husband, I come downstairs. He had spaghetti all at the table. Mm-hmm. The the china out. And I'm like, whoa, we're sitting at the table? He was like, yep, we're going to sit down as a family. Yes. My husband has set the tone for the house because... My husband takes us to Applebee's Mm -hmm. and he lets me know this is a tradition that I started with my children, my foster children. Now I have my own family. I want to continue this tradition. So we look forward to, we look forward to our little fun dates. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny because my family date night, we have our date nights. Yeah, we have our date nights Mm -hmm. and then we have family date nights. And sometimes him and my daughter have date nights. Mm-hmm. So they have father daughter date nights, mm-hmm. and I like when you um oh my god, there's so many things that you do. I just love it. <laughs> now I mean, like Sierra literally comes and goes, Dad, what are we doing this weekend? Yep, that's sure one of does. the things because yes. my daughter sees. Okay, my dad is here and he's he's taking up time with me. Mm-hmm. I have to ask for permission. What are we doing? So if I'm not doing anything Mm -hmm. hey can i go do such and such so we're like i said before we made it look like it's her idea Mm -hmm. parents yes but it's really our idea Mm -hmm. because we make sure she asks us is there something to do but she does it so freely it just looks like it's her idea yes yes and so now so one of the questions i wanted to pose up to you (laughs) is Mm -hmm. that you know Going from being um, married to single and then now married again, yeah. you know, how 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 did that not re- I don't want to use the word make you feel, but mm-hmm. how did how did you make the adjustment? That was difficult. Mm-hmm. That was difficult for me because you know um, what's crazy is because my daughter. <clears throat> 
um, her father and I were married Mm -hmm. and she never got a chance to see us in a household together Mm -hmm. because at the time um, her father and I could not always see eye to eye on stuff. Mm -hmm. So with us not being able to see eye to eye on stuff, we didn't want to argue in front of her. We didn't want to fight in front of her. So we made the conscious decision to say, listen, hey, this is really not working out. Can we just be friends and really like just co-parent and raise our daughter? And it was a great agreement. Mm -hmm. It wasn't easy. Transition wasn't easy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I had to get in the mindset of being independent. Yes. I did. I had to learn how to be a mom Mm -hmm. and be a single mom Mm -hmm. and be okay with the fact that I was single. Mm -hmm. And I had to be okay with being a mom, Mm -hmm. raising my child alone. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, you're not alone. In my household, I was alone. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the night, I still didn't have anybody to turn to and say, and the baby did such and such tonight, right. and the baby did such and such today, yes. and I had a great day at work today, mm-hmm. or whatever the case. I didn't have that. So at the end of the day, I still was raising her by myself. Mm-hmm. It was hard. It was. You know, mm-hmm. my heart were hurt. Um, but I did find peace. Amen. Because one great. thing that my dad did tell me, he said, Allow your daughter to go back and forth with her dad. Yes. Let, y'all, y'all figure that out. Mm-hmm. He said, get that in order. He said, because every time she leaves, you get an opportunity to take a piece of you back. Wow, yes. And that, yes. when I tell you, my daughter's 13, mm-hmm. and hallelujah, mm-hmm. it's been working for the last 13 years. I have rebuilt myself through Jesus Christ. God yes. has used me in so many different ways. God has taken the old heart of mine Mm. out Mm -hmm. and gave me a new heart my mind is renewed because i took the advice every time my daughter goes to her dad's house i take a piece of me back Mm -hmm. i i get me together so Mm -hmm. when she comes back home i can be a better even better mom to her Mm -hmm. i can be a better woman you know so yeah that's something i had to do and it wasn't easy but i did it and I didn't care about who said what. Yes. Yep. So. Yes. Wow. Wow. That is so. That that's just uh, that's just awesome, and you know I commend you for. Thank you. You know, um, being that type of mother, and then also um, allowing her father to be. Oh in my God! Her yes. Life. I was gonna. I I I almost forgot about that. <laughs> no, because her dad. When I tell you. Because we didn't make it doesn't mm-hmm. mean that he's a horrible father. Right. He's fantastic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And his wife, mm-hmm. fantastic. Come on. Let me tell you something. If you haven't been watching our broadcast, <laughs> I'm here to tell you, Naditra tells the truth. Mm-hmm. If I don't like something, I'm going to tell you. Mm-hmm. And if I like it, I'm going to tell you that too. Mm-hmm. But I'm being very honest. Her dad is phenomenal and her stepmother is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, she takes care of my daughter mm-hmm. like my like she birthed my child herself. He takes care of her like he's supposed to. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we flip-flop every other week purposely so everybody can get an opportunity to spend time with her. Yes. She don't have no favorite house. It's just a house. <laughs> it, that's, it, that's really true because I asked her this past week when I went to go pick her up. Yes. And so I was like, you know, just joking. said, hey, home sweet home, huh? I said, wait, is this home number one? Mm-hmm. Or home number two. Come on, come on. And she was on. like, honestly, it's just home. You know, exactly. I, I don't have a home one, home two. This is just home. And I, I, myself personally, I'm just like, wow. You know, because I know sometimes as a parent, mm-hmm. um, well, uh, in the blended family homes and things like that, you know, um, I, I mean, because I didn't come from a blended family home, but, you know, um, I, I I know the parents sometimes try to pull, trying to make the child right. feel like the right. day like they have to choose. more important here or more right. important there. Come on, come on. <clears throat> yeah, so. I, I I had to explain that to her too. Mm-hmm. You know, because in the beginning I was trying to see what I could do to make her in what in some way choose, mm-hmm. or 
It's just called plain manipula- m- manipulation. Just mm-hmm. plain manipulation. Mm-hmm. Us parents do it. We don't realize we do it, but we're doing it. And the Holy Ghost had to check me and say, you cannot manipulate your child Come to on. like you more than she likes her dad or mm-hmm. be in this house more than she's over there at their house. Mm-hmm. God had to check me on it. And I told her, I said, you know what? We're not going to do this game no more. Mm-hmm. You don't have to choose. You don't have to pick. Yes. We're going to continue to keep going back and forth. That's the bottom line, you mm-hmm. know. And I love the fact that you and her father have a phenomenal relationship. Yes. Y'all text each other. Y'all call each other. Yes. Y'all do drop-offs, pickups. I mean, there, I did get offended every now and then because <laughs> <laughs> he would talk. He would talk to my husband more than he talked to me. <laughs> and I couldn't get two words out of him half the time. And... Oh, it just would burn my soul. I'd be like, you can't do this. I've been knowing them longer. But, you know, but it's okay. I'm so mm-hmm. glad that you guys are wonderful black men. Mm-hmm. Because yes. both of you make an impact in the community. He makes an incom- impact in, in the community. Yes. You're making an impact in, com- in the community. Yes. And you guys are strong black men working together to raise one child yes who does that yes. she has i tell anybody my daughter has four phenomenal parents mm, she has mm. two fathers she mm-hmm. has two mothers she has two houses and she's loved by four different people yes absolutely yeah. so you know we still have a, a few minutes left um i know there were some things before we started recording that yes. you said that you wanted to like encourage the people with you know, bring out some things. Um, did you want to talk on that briefly? <laughs> sure. Um, basically, I just, just want to encourage every mom and every dad to communicate. Communication is definitely one of the major keys mm-hmm. in a relationship. And moms, dads, be careful about what you say to your children. Yes. Be careful of the yes. words that you say oh, to your goodness. kids. Yes, I mean, I know sometimes the kids do little goofy, dumb stuff. But don't call them stupid. Mm -hmm. Don't call them dumb. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to tell you something. I came from a family. My parents were still together. Um, My parents were married for over 40 years. Mm -hmm. Loving people. But parenting, they did not always do well in. Come on. Because they would call me names. They would say things that were hurtful to me. Mm -hmm. And those words stuck to me like Lou. Wow. Stuck to me like Lou, and it took Jesus Christ to get those words off of me. Mm -hmm. But you know how old I was when it happened? A grown woman in her 30s. Jesus. 30, 35 years old with my head held down. Mm. At the age of 36, God broke those word curses off of me. Yes. And for the last four years, I have been working extremely hard through Jesus Christ to stay strong and stay positive and not allow myself to revert back to what they used to say about me. Mm, So mm -hmm. mommies, daddies, if you're not going to say nothing positive to your children when you're angry, do yourself a favor. Shut your mouth. Walk away. Come on. Because death in life is really in the power of the tongue. Amen. And when you speak those things, you know, it really does take the effect uh, on that child. It does. It really does. And so that was one of the things that as being a foster parent Mm -hmm. is that I had to continue to speak positively um, into these young men because, you know, so when I was a youth pastor, you know, it was one thing to be able to speak into um, these kids life and motivate them and keep going. And they had to go back home um, to their family, some good, some bad, some indifferent. But then, you know, now I'm talking about kids who's uh, coming back to my home Come on. to live, yes. you know, and you know, Hey, I seen the good, the bad, the ugly, the yes. indifferent, you know? Um, and it really did take God to be able to still love these kids. Um, so one of, one of the things, so, uh, my two oldest boys, <laughs> God bless them. <laughs> Jesus. So that's all right, baby. <laughs> <laughs> my, I was with my formal pastor. <laughs> we had went to the TBN studio to go do some recordings, Mm-mm-mm. and so you know, I, so now we coming back right. to Jersey from the TBN studio, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I get a phone call saying, "Hey, your kids was just up here. They took." A taxi 
from my house to the church and then they <laughs> abandoned the taxi. I don't even know if I have ever told you this story. Once. I, once. Once. These kids left me with a $30 taxi cab bill. But that's what kids do. They do they do they do the unusual, the unexpected <laughs> and the expected. Mm-hmm. Okay? But So I had to go from preacher pastor and put on daddy hat. <laughs> and lay the law down. Listen, it had to wait, had to go find them. Well they knew they was wrong. Lay- <laughs> they knew that was wrong, so they ran. I'm telling you, and it's, and because you know when the kids came into my home, I said, "Listen, I said, y'all tell me what y'all dealing with. Y'all do y'all smoke weed? Mm-hmm. Do, do do are y'all having sex? You know this and that, blah blah blah." I said, "Cause I need to know what spirit I'm dealing with here." Exactly, and that's good that you ask those questions mm-hmm. because, like you said, so you know what you're dealing with, so you know how to work with them, you know mm-hmm. how to coach them. Because every child, mothers and fathers, are different. Our, yes. All of our children are different. Yes. You cannot handle all kids the same exact way. So, look, so I don't care how you was raised. I was raised old, raised old school. My parents were a lot older when they had me. They were in their forties. So when they had me, they had me older, mm-hmm. and they tried to raise all the kids the same way, mm-hmm. and, and they, mm-hmm. you know, and and it really hurt. Us instead of helping us. Yes. It can damage the children because you got to know. And then don't play favorites. Yes. Please don't oh, play good. favorites. Yes. Because my parents did that to me and my sisters. Mm-hmm. You know, my mom favored one child more than the other. And it burnt our relationship. To this day, I still don't talk to my sister because of that. Wow. We want to make it right, but it's like everybody's. It's just so much. And after a mm-hmm. while, you get to the point where you get older, you're like, I just can't do this anymore. You know, yes. I can't drain myself. But God is good. We love each and every one of you. Yes, We thank absolutely. you for tuning in with us. We yes. thank you for just joining us at this time to talk about love and talk about family. Absolutely, so, yes. So, Pastor Shannon, it has been a blast. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs> hey, listen, join us next week. We're going to have our daughter on next week. And Amen. you're going to get a chance to see her point of view. Thank you so much and God bless you. God bless you.